Hey friends, Matt aka Martin here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own evolving pad sounds in Ableton Live using only stock Ableton Live devices. I'm going to walk you through a few of the concepts behind this kind of sound design and how you can apply them inside of Ableton Live or really in any door for that matter. And so that by the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of how to apply these techniques and ideas for yourself in order to create your very own cool evolving pad like sound. Before we get started, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below, subscribe if you're new and if you really enjoy this video, then feel free to head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page, where you can also download a few different sounds that I've made using this technique, as well as the sound that we're going to make in today's video. And so, with that all said, let's jump into Ableton Live and let me show you how to create your very own evolving pad sounds. Okay, so here we are inside of Ableton Live, and what I want to do to start with is just show you a few different sounds that I've actually created using these techniques. If you want to download these sounds, you can find a link down in the description, but let's take a listen. Okay, so there are some examples of sounds you can make using these techniques. So let's get in and actually make a sound from scratch. So I've got a blank MIDI track loaded up here and I'm actually gonna be creating these sounds using Wavetable, but you can use them using any synth that you would like. The same concepts will apply. I'm gonna add a Wavetable to this MIDI track. And one of the core aspects of creating some kind of evolving pad-like sound is having a really long envelope. So what we're going to do is actually start with our envelope. So I'm going to go here and this is what our basic default wavetable patch sounds like. I'm actually going to increase the sustain a little bit and I'm actually going to increase the attack and the release of this amplitude envelope quite significantly. We might go kind of in the nine to 10 second range and also increase the decay fairly significantly as well so that we get this really long swelling sound that also overlaps every single time we press new notes. And it takes a while for it to fade out as well. Now we can adjust these amplitude envelope parameters to our liking. I might reduce the sustain a little bit as well, maybe reduce the decay slightly too. And we can adjust this further on later down the line too. Next thing we wanna do is choose a basic starting oscillator. Now in Wavetable, and the reason that I've chosen Wavetable for this is that we get access to Wavetable oscillators, which by default are much more applicable to this kind of sound design than typical waveforms like sawtooth waves and square waves and stuff like that. You could of course set this to a sawtooth wave, which would sound like this. And if you want that kind of a sound, absolutely go for it. But I'm actually gonna go and choose a different sound here. I might go to my collection wavetables and let's just maybe have Amber, this first one. So it's still got that higher end harmonic content, it sounds a little bit metallic, but we can potentially change that later on down the line. But it's got a lot of interesting aspects 
a lot of interesting waves in this wavetable here. The next thing we're gonna do is add some more movement to the sound. So what I'm actually gonna do is grab another envelope. I'm gonna use envelope two here and I'm gonna map envelope two to the movement of oscillator one's wavetable position. I'm gonna do this by going over to my matrix and selecting oscillator one position right here. That should show up in my matrix on the right. And then I can just simply increase or decrease the amount that envelope two is affecting the oscillator one's position. Maybe let's increase this, maybe not to 100%. And much like with our amplitude envelope, I want this to be quite long. So we'll increase the attack quite a lot, increase the decay a fair bit, maybe keep the sustain at 50, increase the release too. And I might even decrease the default position of this oscillator position down to 0%. Let's increase the attack even more. And we're already starting to get something that's a bit more evolving. Next, we're going to engage our filter. And I'm gonna just keep this on a low pass filter because I wanna kind of remove a lot of those higher frequencies. So let's just pull this down a little bit. And then again, we just wanna add some movement to this filter. So you could use envelope two if you've already got that going on, um, or you could use envelope three. In this particular instance, I'm actually just gonna use envelope three. So we have another envelope here, and I'm gonna map envelope three to the filter frequency cutoff of filter one here. So same thing, select filter frequency cutoff one, go to my matrix and now go to envelope three and increase the amount that envelope three is affecting filter one's frequency right here. Once we've done that, go back to envelope three and now we can adjust the parameters yet again. So I'm gonna increase the attack quite significantly. I'm gonna decrease the sustain actually down quite a lot, maybe all the way to 0%. We can see how that sounds. Again, increase the attack, increase the decay and I'm gonna increase the release here as well. Because we have such a long attack and decay, I actually want a longer release so that, uh, because we also have a long release on the amplitude envelope, the filter doesn't cut off immediately as soon as I release the key. And this helps to create a bit more of a natural evolving sound, regardless of the length of the notes that we press. Might even increase that attack a little bit more, increase that decay, increase that release, go back to envelope two, do the same thing with the attack. I'm also gonna set the lowest frequency position here to be about 100, increase the resonance of the filter, and then I'm also going to engage the filter circuit, maybe go to OSR, and just drive it by a few decibels to add some saturation to the signal. Now we get to start adding some extra stuff to this synth. Notice we haven't even added any audio effects yet. I'm actually gonna go to my unison mode in the bottom right hand corner and I can select any of these unison modes. Potentially for this one, I might want the shimmer unison mode. I'm gonna increase the voices a fair bit, maybe up to six and keep the amount maybe around 20 to 30%. Already we've got a really cool sound starting to happen here. Now we can find some other parameters inside of this synthesizer to modulate. As an example, I might go back to my oscillator one here and maybe modulate the warp control of the oscillator here, but potentially we'll do that with a different envelope and maybe even an LFO as well. So I might go to envelope three and get envelope three to modulate the warp position of oscillator one right here. So again, click on warp come to find oscillator one warp in here. Let's go oscillator three. Maybe it's going the other direction a little bit. And I might also go to LFO one and turn off re-trigger on LFO one. Let's slow down the rate 
significantly as well. And let's map LFO1 to that warp control there too. So select LFO1, oscillator 1 warp, increase that just subtly so we get some subtle movement in that warp position too. And we can see that moving now. And this can be quite intense, so maybe turn it down a little bit if you want to. I'm actually also going to decrease the amount that filter one frequency is being affected by envelope three, so I don't get all those harsh high frequencies. I'm also going to engage a second filter here. I'm going to set this to be a notch filter, and we're going to increase the frequency up here. I'm keeping it in serial mode, so we have filter one running into filter two. Then I might even engage the filter circuit on filter number two here, increase the drive by about three dB. I'm going to turn down my volume here to compensate a little bit as well maybe go down to negative 12. And again, we're gonna add some movement to filter two's frequency position here. I might do this with envelope two now, as well as maybe add some movement with LFO one as well. So we get some more weird movement going on there. You can even add in some other oscillators in here too. So I might go and add a secondary oscillator in the form of oscillator two, and I might have this be something a little bit more simple, maybe like a triangle wave. So this doesn't have to be a more complex oscillator right here. And if you want, you can introduce some subtle movement in here too. I might go to the oscillator effect mode and set it to classic and maybe introduce some pulse width modulation with LFO number two here as well. So again, Turn off retrigger on LFO number two, decrease the rate quite substantially, go back to my matrix and have the LFO two rate affecting the pulse width of oscillator two right here. And another nice thing to be able to do is add in a sub oscillator as well. So we get a nice low rumbling tone. And I'm going to do this with the sub oscillator over the left right here. Just engage that. I don't even need to change the gain or the tone. Might increase the tone a little bit. And I'm just going to keep it on negative one octave so that we have a third oscillator that's playing an octave below the incoming MIDI note. And now we can also start to add some performative aspects to this sound. So if you've got a MIDI keyboard, adding performative aspects to a synthesizer sound is a really great way to bring it to life and enjoy playing a little bit more rather than just kind of like clicking in the MIDI notes. We can do this in our MIDI tab here and we can add things like the velocity and randomization to affect different Aspects. Now we can see that the velocity is already mapped to the amplitude right here, which is fantastic. I might turn that down a little bit right here. I'm going to disengage the mod wheel from the oscillator one position. I can do that by just double clicking right here. Now I'm not really going to be worrying about the pitch bend or the pressure right here. And I'm not really going to be going into the MPE either. Uh, but of course you can if you would like to. But now we can do things like maybe have the velocity affect the position of the filter frequency. So I could pull down the filter frequency even more and make it so that a harder velocity opens up the filter a little bit more. Maybe the note that I press actually affects the filter two frequency in a negative direction. Potentially I could have oscillator one's position also be slightly randomized with this randomize feature right here. And I might even have, uh, I don't know, the velocity also affect oscillator two's pulse width, as well as add some randomization to oscillator two's pulse width with the random control right here.
Another nice thing to do here is also attach the timing of the envelopes to say the velocity as well. So I can do this by either attaching the time control here, the global time control to the velocity, which is just an easy way of doing this. Otherwise you can go and attach the attack time of each of the individual envelopes to this velocity as well. So if I increase this, actually I need to decrease that instead so that a higher velocity means a faster time. And this just adds some more performability to the sound. And now we have our basic synthesized part of the signal. And from here, we can start adding a variety of different audio effects to affect the sound even more. Audio effects that are really great to add are things like reverb, delay, modulation effects such as phases, flanges, and chorus, and even some more esoteric effects like grain delays or some weird pitch or spectral effects as well. Now, it's kind of beyond the scope of this video to go into depth on all the different effects, but let's just add a few different effects here to see what we can get this sound sounding like. So I'm going to go to my audio effects and let's maybe add a some kind of modulation effect first in the form of a chorus to increase some width and add some more depth to this signal. Might turn this onto ensemble mode, increase the dry wet to about 70-ish percent, turn the rate down and the amount up. I might even increase the warmth a little bit as well, which adds some subtle saturation to the signal, and maybe increase the feedback slightly as well. that chorus is really nice and now let's add a phaser flanger after that which we can see already adds some really nice movement to the signal if we play a note We get some really cool movement going on on either side, but I might want to slow down that rate a little bit and maybe even make it not linked to the tempo so I can turn it to Hertz mode here, turn the modulation amount down a little bit, maybe increase the feedback a little bit too, and maybe change some of these other aspects here, potentially change things like the blend uh, and maybe introduce some more notches in here. Again, add some more warmth. And just because it's getting a little bit quiet, I'm going to increase the output volume a little bit of the synthesizer too, back to about negative nine dB. Next, we can start to play around with some more time-based audio effects, things like delay and reverb. If I come here and add a, let's add a echo to start with, one of Ableton Live's echo devices. And of course, you could play around with the parameters here, or if you didn't really know where to start, you could just start with some echo presets. I might click on this little button right here, my hot swap button, go back to my audio effects, go back to delay and loop, and under echo, we can find some kind of echo preset. Maybe if I go to vintage delay or modulated delay and go to something like analog collapse or backdoor, let's try both of these. I really like this, but I'm going to adjust some of the parameters here on this analog, maybe turn the input down a little bit. I'm also going to add a limiter after our effects here because it's starting to get a little bit loud. And now we can maybe also increase the amount of reverb on this echo device a little bit too. And you could also play around with things like the dry wet as well. Maybe even decrease the amount of ducking here, turn down the noise and the wobble, play around with some things and just see how it sounds.
Next up, let's add a reverb. I'm gonna use Ableton Live's hybrid reverb here. Let's go down to reverb and resonance and grab a hybrid reverb. And again, you can play around with some different parameters here. You can start with a preset or a really good way to start with creating some really interesting sounds, things that I like. I like to go to the algorithm mode here and select the shimmer mode, increase the decay quite a bit. We'll turn down the dry wet just a little bit as well. Turn up the shimmer amount and we'll change the blend so that it's mostly towards the shimmer here, but we still have a little bit of this other stuff going on. And then maybe just go into here and maybe choose bigger spaces and find a bigger kind of reverby sound. And now let's hear how this sounds like. And from here, again, you can just add more and more effects. You can go back and you can adjust the wavetable device or whatever other device you are using, whatever other synthesizer you're using. You could even, again, as I mentioned, play around some more interesting effects, things like maybe the spectral time effect could be a really interesting one to play around with if you're in Ableton Live. Maybe put this after the echo device and before the reverb device. And again, if you're not sure what any of the parameters do, I'm just gonna use a preset, click on this and maybe go delay spray. Sounds really interesting. I'm gonna turn the dry wet down just a little bit because I don't want it fully wet. Let's have a listen to what this sounds like. Now, once you've got your sound, if you want to add some more performability to it, one of the things you can do is select all the devices in here. So click on the limiter at the end, hold down shift, scroll back and select the wavetable. Now with all of your devices selected, right click and click on group. And this will add them all to an instrument rack. Now this is really great as a way of saving all of these devices together as a preset, but it's also a really great way of adding some extra performability to a sound in the form of macros. So what we could do here is find parameters that you might want to commonly tweak, things like the filter frequency, and I can right click on this and map it to macro one. And now I can see all of my macros here on the left hand side and all these do are just allow me really quick access to potentially commonly used controls inside of this particular preset. Now macros is a whole other video, but this is just a really great way to add some extra performability to your sound. I'm going to go ahead and create some macros here for this particular rack so that when you download it, it's got a bunch of macros already mapped to it. But for the sake of ease, let's just show you how to save this preset once you've designed it. So what you probably want to do is just collapse all of these instruments and effects right here by going over to the left and clicking on the show hide devices button. And now we're going to rename our instrument rack. I can right click on the title bar and I can go to rename and I might call this MT for Martin dash. I don't know. Let's give it some kind of interesting name like pushing stars. I have no idea. And now what you want to do is simply come down to the little save icon right here and you can save the preset. Or if you have a place where you'd like to save all of your presets, such as in the user library, you can go to your user library in the browser. And you can just simply click and drag this device into there, click enter, and it will save your device as a preset that you can load up in any session from then on out. So I went and changed a few things, added a bunch of macros, cleaned up the sound a little bit, and here is our final result.
And that is how you can create your very own evolving pad sound inside of Ableton Live using only stock Ableton Live devices. If you want to download the sound I made in today's video, as well as a few other sounds that I've made using these techniques, feel free to head to my Buy Me A Coffee page, link in the description where you can do so for free. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below telling me what you learned and what you enjoyed about this video. Subscribe if you're new, and if you really enjoyed it, why not consider buying me a coffee? It's a really great way to help support me and the channel and help me keep making more cool content like this. That's all for now. If you want to check out some previous sound design videos, make sure to click here. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good one.